everyone! Today I'm going to show you a couple of missions that will reveal some secrets of our only natural satellite, the Moon. First off, I'm launching a simple probe that will perform an altimetry scan of lunar surface. It's quite a small satellite that will be put on the polar orbit around the Moon and it will allow the altimetry radar to map the whole globe as the Moon will slowly rotate during its orbit. After reaching orbital velocity, second stage of the gargoyle rocket ignites again to the orbit itself. For the transfer stage, I've used a small Juno 6K engine and it has a really nice efficiency and just enough to throw a 600 kg payload to the lunar transfer orbit. Scanner is quite energy hungry, so I had to use four quite massive solar panels. Additionally, there are two more science experiments attached orbital perturbation experiment and infrared radiometry, so I can get some free science. Right after getting to the moon's SOI, I've performed a maneuver to adjust the inclination to about 90 degrees. the Perusaline, the engine was lit once again to synchronize the orbit. It is a tiny generic thruster, so it took over 6 minutes to get to desired orbit. The last thing before starting the scan is to orient the craft towards the sun to get as much electricity as possible. Getting altimetry measurements took some time, but after about 2 weeks it was ready. This data will be useful in the future to decide about potential landing spots for more advanced missions. The next project consists of two launches. The goal is to land a craft on the far side of the moon and to transfer scientific data from there. So I need some relay sets to allow the lander to connect to Earth. I've decided to take the full-on approach and to launch a set of four relay sets that will ensure connection all around the Moon. The satellite should survive in orbit for several years, so for sure other future missions will also take advantage of them. All the satellites are being launched together on my Golem rocket, with Gremlin upper stage. Gremlin will be responsible for translunar injection and achieving a resonant orbit around the Moon. are equipped with two antennas. One is omnidirectional UHF antenna that will connect with other crafts and relays and a directional S-band antenna that will ensure high-speed connection with Earth. Resonant orbit will allow me to deploy all four satellites in equidistant locations around the same orbit. The final orbital altitude of the relays is 1000 km. Even in hibernation mode, Gremlin would run out of batteries, so one of the relays' solar panels were extended to keep avionics running during the transfer. To get the proper resonant orbit, I've used a resonant orbit calculator, a very useful website that will allow you to get the needed orbital parameters. 
I've put the proper data into it, and now I know that I need to set my epilapses for almost 1900 kilometers, so my orbital period will be 5 fourths of the final period of the relay sets. It also tells me that the final circularization will take about 90 meters per second. Knowing all that, I've plotted the maneuver and Gremlin got to proper orbit. Right after that, I separate the first relay and I get to roughly circular 1000 by 1000 km orbit. Then, I take a note of my orbital period, in this case it's 3 hours 35 minutes, and I make sure that all other satellites will match it as tightly as possible. I switch back to the cluster and I continue deploying relay sets each time I approach the periapsis. After successful deployment, Gremlin stage is being decommissioned by smashing it into the moon. Satellites form a beautiful pattern and they will ensure communication with crafts on the far side of the moon. Finally, we can proceed to launch the lander. The construction is a proven design, as several similar landers have already successfully made their journey to the lunar surface. But unlike its predecessors, which made a direct descent without making orbit, this one will have to circularize first to make a targeted landing on the far side of the moon. And, as before, the Gremlin stage will take care of the transfer burn and most of the landing. I have stopped the burn a bit too early, but fortunately I have plenty of RCS fuel to make a final correction. After getting to low lunar orbit, I have looked for an interesting biome along my orbital path, but nothing specific came up, so I decided to land on Highlands, as I haven't visited it yet.
I had to make a quite big plane change, but the Delta V budget was quite healthy, so it was not a problem. Eleven D-33 lit for the last time, and the lander detached from the Gremlin at quite a low altitude. The landing was the most graceful, as I didn't have much time to prepare. Debris from Gremlin rolled towards the craft, but luckily there was no damage. Finally, scientific equipment has been turned on, and for the first time in history, scientific data has been transferred from the far side of the moon. Lunar Comsats have made a great job relaying this data back to Earth. Thank you everyone for watching. Please press like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and see you again in my next video.